What's up everybody? We're doing a fast and simple project today. We're making a belt. This video is brought to you by Lonsdale Leather. Be sure to check the description below for links to their website where you can pick up all sorts of tools, supplies, and of course, leather. I'm using some vegetable tan leather here. It's just a hair under 10 ounce. Around 8 to 10 is fine for a belt. And I'm going to make it an inch and a half wide. So I'm just setting my strap cutter to the appropriate width after cutting a straight edge. And I just strip the belt right out of it. Nice and easy. Now I'm just making sure the length is what I want, depending on whoever's waist it is. And I'm using a couple of strap end punches to do both ends. The tip and the fold where the buckle will go. I'm using a pretty big slot punch there and then a couple little hole punches and then I'm going to use my bench skiver to thin down the area where the buckle goes and that'll make it so I can fold the leather a lot easier and it sits a lot better. To get a nice smooth edge you're going to want to bevel both sides of your belt. I'm using a number two beveler here I'm going around both sides just to curve it a little bit. I'm using a craft tool pro beveler here. Back when I did this video, I was trying to use them, and really, I never really got the hang of it. I don't really like them, so I just went back to the regular old bevelers recently. This already has a stitch groove on it, so this is an old video of mine. I must have missed this footage. Look up stitch grooving. You can use it to actually put a groove for stitches, or you can use it just to decorate your belt. So I've used it to decorate the belt here. There's not going to be any stitching on this belt. I'm going to be doing a little bit of leather carving on this belt, so I'm going to wet the belt down. I don't want it to soak, but I want it to be fairly wet, and then you let it dry for just enough time so that the uh, imprint will transfer onto the belt. Now you can only do this with vegetable tanned leather, so if you're asking in the comments about if it'll work with a different kind of leather, no it won't. It'll really only work with vegetable tan. So I go around the whole serpent design that I have with my stylus and make sure it's all imprinted in really nice. So in all honesty, that looks a little rough, but we're not worried about it because the swivel knife that I'm using here is what's going to make the lines look perfect. Uh, if your stylus transfer is a little weird looking, it's really not that big a deal. Don't sweat it too much. I've been using this pattern that I start putting into the belt for a while now. I like it. It's really simple, but it looks good. I can't remember who I picked it up off of exactly, but I've seen it around a lot in variations with a different number of cuts. I really like this design. You'll see me use it a lot. It's really simple, and for the amount of work it takes to do a whole belt like this, it really adds to it. With that all done, it's time to do some beveling on our serpent. This will make it pop out a lot more. You can get various bevelers with textures and different sizes. This one here is a medium beveler, and I'll go around the whole serpent and even bevel where it dips under and over lines to give it a more 3D look. And for those of you who don't know, I sell all my artwork on my website and on my Etsy store, and I put all of my artwork in the month that I made it, up on my Patreon. So if I make five pieces of art, my Patreon subscribers get that. And that goes for all my patterns as well, the same deal, up on my Etsy and website, and limited time on my Patreon. You can find links to all of those in the description of this video. I'll put a link right here as well for you guys. Leather carving can be both incredibly rewarding and incredibly tedious. Just be patient. If your hand's getting a little sore, you can take a break. Some people like to take their already wet, partially carved uh, pieces and put them in a Ziploc bag and that'll make it so it retains the moisture. This is good so that you don't need to wait around when you want to tool it again. You may have to wet it a little bit, but also what it does is every time you wet the leather and let it dry, you're slowly destroying your piece. You don't want to keep doing that repeatedly, so either carve it all at once or put it in a plastic bag between sessions. You can see here that I've gone to a narrower beveler. 
That's because when you're going around tight corners, you want a narrower beveler, so it makes it a nicer looking bevel. There you go, that looks pretty good. Now the best way to make your carving pop is to paint around it, apply your resist, and then apply your antique finish. Now this is going to be an incredibly tedious process, the painting, and isn't totally necessary. You can make your carving pop without having to paint your belt, and this is definitely painting with dyes, and it takes a few coats and a lot of practice. Now when I originally did this, I didn't do what I do now, which is I wet the leather before I paint it. It makes it a lot more even. This belt turns out fine, but just in general, I think if you're painting with dyes and you want it to be a little more even, it's a good idea to wet your leather down. It doesn't need to be soaking, but it should be evenly damp and dry on the surface. Now we're going to fly through this with the dauber, get all the rest of the belt dyed. Get it all nice and even, put a coat of dye on the edge. And once we've got that, we're going to start thinking about putting our finish on, well, our resist. Our finish and resist are kind of the same thing. Just all finishes are resists? No, all resists are finishes, but not all finishes are resists, if you know what I'm saying. But before that, this would be the time where you want to put some oil on. If you want to put some oil on, you don't necessarily have to. I'm just going to do a really light coat of Neat's Foot oil over the whole belt. And then I gotta make sure it dries, so you don't want to have any surface coat on your belt. Give it a nice buff after you let it dry a bit, because that is going to inhibit your resist or finish from uh, tacking down to your leather. Because we're using a heel bar buckle, which is a buckle that does not have its own keeper to hold your belt tongue after it's gone through the buckle, we have to make our keeper. So our keeper here is about a 6 ounce vegetable tanned and it's maybe a half inch wide maybe a little less same idea we're gonna bevel it we're using a much smaller beveler because it's much thinner leather the thinner the leather you use the smaller the beveler you should be using i start off trying to be careful with the dye on this and then realize i should just dye the whole thing and that makes it a lot easier. Just dye the front and back, it doesn't matter. You're, the back of this isn't hitting anything. Even it all out. Now here I'm doing my edges so I can slick them up. I've just got a little beeswax. In hindsight, I think the idea behind this was that I didn't want to interfere with my resist and finish when I was burnishing. I wanted to make sure nothing was scraping off my finish. So I was gonna do my edges first and then do the antiquing afterwards. In hindsight, what I would do is put your resist on and antique your belt before you do your edges, then do your edges, and then do a final finish on it. So another, another coat of your resist or a finish of your choosing. Almost always I just use the same resist over the antique. So it's resist, antique, wax, burnish, and then resist again. Some people just use water to burnish and then none of this matters, but because I'm using wax to burnish, it could interfere with your antique, your resist, all sorts of things. So it's probably best to do it after the initial resist and antique. Whether you're dyeing, antiquing, burnishing edges, make sure you give your piece a nice buff afterwards. Here I'm buffing it and focusing on the edges so I can uh, pull up any of that wax that's been left over because I don't want it to interfere with any of the resist or antique that I'm about to put on it. Same thing goes for your little keeper here. A little bit of wax and burnish it up with a wood slicker or your burnishing tool of choice and then buff it up. I'm using Phoebing's brand Neutral Resoline here. It's an acrylic finish, works great, put a thin coat on. Maybe a couple of coats if you're worried. And I'm using my spray gun, which I highly recommend if you have the ability to use a spray gun, use a spray gun. But otherwise, you'd put it on with a slightly damp sponge. After it dries, we're going to put our antique finish on. I almost always put too much on. It gets on the back. It's a bit of a pain in the butt. And I'm hopefully getting better at it. But you just want to get it in all the cracks. Yeah, that's like way too much. I'm lost my mind here. But you get the idea. You're rubbing the antique gel 
into all the cracks and then you're wiping it off the surface and that leaves your surface mostly clean of antique stain and it gets all of that antique into all your cuts and bevels to really make it pop. Now it seems to me here that I'm totally ignoring the fact that I probably got that antique gel all over the back in a blotchy mess. So you can put tape on the back or you can just put a little less antique gel and be a little more careful than I was. But it turned out nice on the front. I think the back probably has a bit of blotchiness on it. As far as the keeper goes, you can punch some holes and stitch it together. You don't need to buy a stapler. Uh, my stapler is kind of handy, but nothing beats a nice stitched keeper. Um, ask Levi of Drawbridge Props about that. Now we've buffed up the whole surface. We've got our edges already done. It's looking pretty good. That resisted its job really nicely. Then you put your final finish on it, and then put your buckle on it. I'm using a solid brass heel bar buckle here, like I mentioned earlier. I'm going to put it together with a couple of brass rivets, and then it'll be all done. When you're setting rivets, you don't necessarily have to have them set with a rivet setter. You can just smash them down, but obviously it looks a little nicer if you set them with a nice rivet setter. It has a nice slight curve to it. Well, that's about it everybody. Belts are easy, minimal tools. Make sure you hit the like button, really helps the channel out. Hit the notification button so you don't miss any of my videos. And until next time, keep on being creative in whatever it is you do.